Hello everybody, I'm your host Wheel Trouble. Welcome back to this Nightmare Nights 2017 podcast series. This is episode 5 of 6, and in this we're going to go ahead and meet the artists. I'm going to apologize again ahead of time profusely, as artists don't technically work around audio-visual equipment a lot and probably had no clue what the microphones were actually there for. When I boosted the audio, the air conditioning was overpowering the voices. Yes, the air conditioning. Once again, I removed as much of that noise as I can. A lot of what you hear is going to sound underwater. That is the digital enhancement that is working, trying to bring up the audio to where you can actually understand the panelists. Without further ado, let's go ahead and meet these very talented artists. Oh no, I've stopped believing. <laughs> Don't. Stop believing. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the artist panel on this, the day three of the final Nightmare Nights. How are you all doing? <laughs> so, we have not been to one of our panels yet, one of the main events panels. Still a few people. But most of you know how the cards work. I will explain quickly again. See wonderful Steve Strays in there. Keep round of applause, please, for Steve Strays. In a moment, he will be distributing index cards and pencils to those of you who wish to ask a question of our panelists, who I will introduce in a moment. If you wish a card, just stick your hand in the air. He will hand one to you. When you've got your card question filled out, wave in the air. He or hopefully one or two other volunteers will come round and fling them at me, and I will sort them round and figure out what questions to ask of our guests. It's just that simple. So, without further ado, let me make sure that I have all that listed correctly. Please welcome to the stage, Abigail Leakfish Starling. Jane Dix. The Rock of the I'm a 
I have a question here. Yeah. I have a question here. I think that's from the AV staff, which is could you move your mouths a little bit closer to the mic? No, absolutely not. And I just realized I asked that without using a mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. Uh, all right. Um, Anyone else want to talk about inspiration? I mean, are we going down the line? Yes. Yeah, it's just down the line. Uh, I answered, again, a very similar question at the Everybody Panel yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry. I know. How dare you? I'm sorry. Can we get a new moderator, please? <laughs> so your inspirations, uh, you have, you know, those inspirations that you uh, find as a younger, you know, younger person, child, is that the word? Right. Sunday. I'm going to use the same excuse as everybody else, Sunday. Uh, uh, so, some people don't start drawing until they're much older, but I think uh, a lot of us uh, find inspiration as a child, and it's usually like on movies like Disney or Looney Tunes, which is what I came from, uh, but you know, your inspirations also change constantly. Um, like, one of my biggest current inspirations is Steven Universe. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! I love that. Um, and that has really been driving me to, you know, hone my skill as an animator because I see these amazingly skilled storyboarders and Rebecca Sugar herself is just incredible. Uh, and, yeah, it's just... It's constantly changing, but the stuff that inspired you as a kid will always stick with you. Something that has always inspired me growing up was colors. I every time I look at colors and how this would look good as a happy scene or a sad scene. Um, when I took color theory in college, the colors has a lot to do with a character's personality, like, well, for example, Butterfly, she's very astral, she's very handful, her feet and nails are very calm and cool. Um, she was a very red black lucy. <laughs> you wouldn't get that gentle gentleness because red and black is very harsh. <laughs> Are you very good? I'm sorry. Anybody has a red and black? I'm so sorry. Not sorry at the same time. Sorry, I'm sorry, guys. But um, colors usually like to inspire me to do things. Something that I've learned um, over the years is there's a color palette generator online. Um, I think it's called College generator.com or something, and then just put in a screenshot of a landscape or whatever, something that looks very pleasing to the eyes, I color eyes, and they pick the dominant colors of it and give you a color palette, which usually are very, you know, harmful, they complement each other. So if you're having trouble trying to pick colors for an OC, and you look at landscape or some sort of color, and you're like, oh, that looks nice together, but you can't really tell which colors which. You put it in a palette generator, look at all the colors. There's your color tree next OC. Very simple. <laughs> so something like that, like, inspires me to, you know, make good characters. Or, um, I do. I love doing. I love creating characters. So if I look at colors, it helps. <laughs> I mean, all of us, I think, are inspired by, you know, the media and the world around us that we consume. Uh, I've personally always been a huge animation fan, especially anime moment. Uh, anything from Full Mouthness to Kirk Hacker Soccer, I'm like, woo! Um, but also, I think one of my biggest inspirations is just all of my peers, because just watching them grow and improve inspires me to do better and to support one another. I talked about this a little bit at the charity auction yesterday, um, but we've all kind of grown together and that's always meant a lot to me um, because that's part of what drives me. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> you too, you jerk. <laughs> Artists are like a family, and we all very much motivate each other. Mm -hmm. like, Especially when we're underground. Yeah. <laughs>
we were just having a good conversation about that backstage, all screaming at each other. You undercharge for your run. You undercharge. <laughs> Just like having a fight. <laughs> <laughs> You're artists, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Even if it's just that extra, like, have a box, just that gesture, it says a lot to us. Oh, it makes our freaking week. Oh, yeah. When people do that, it's great. There's no such thing as paying a few things. Great questions again. Um, also, one other thing about like Argus is we can just bounce ideas off each other really well because we like have that sort of creative uh, energy and can kind of visualize what their artists inspires other artists. Yeah. So uh, for me, my company has actually been a really big inspiration. It's kind of what got me into fashion designing because there's just there's so many options. But it's a good feeling. Yeah, good. It's very good. Yeah. I mean, questions all the time, like on my Facebook and Twitter, just saying that, oh, you're you're constantly bright in my day, or you're inspired. I'm just like, oh. And I, I don't even know how to respond to that. Like, I feel like just saying thank you isn't enough. Right. 
there's there are no words that I can say that really like convey how happy I am that I inspired somebody and how happy I am that I can say that I can do anything. It just it warms my heart. Warms my heart. Oh, well, I mean, it's a good feeling. Uh, it's also a confusing. <laughs> it's like a weird feeling because you're uh, so so much when you make art, it's uh, such a personal thing, and then for somebody else to be affected by it in other ways, it's sort of uh, not an intrusion, but a little confusing. You're just like, oh god, it's weird. Uh, with this person, <laughs> and somehow I did a thing with this person, like I know it, it's printed and goes out and people see it, so I'm not deluding uh, like, uh, myself and thinking that it's not going to have some effect, but it is a little confusing. Uh, and also, I'm driven a lot by uh, uh, anxiety, so the first time they say that they like something, that is less helpful than if they said they hated it. <laughs> oh, you hated it? Great. Wait till next time. Spite <laughs> is a really good mode. Definitely motivated by the story. How many people are just like, oh, you can't do this? And I'm like, really now? Oh, you can't eat 12 pizza as well. You said that I can't. Like, yeah, growing up, I know, I... My family always tried to like deter me away from art um, because you know they were like it's not a real job. Like you're gonna starve, yeah, and all this garbage. And also they just they wanted me to have you know office job and stuff like because they didn't get it. Um, and most of the time I just kind of responded like, heck you, I'm just gonna do it anyway. <laughs> heck you, mom and dad. <laughs> My family thought I was gonna be an engineer. <laughs> well, I was voted most likely to become a nun. That's my high school school. Wow. What is it with families wanting their kids to become nuns? No thank you. I think that will like it. No offense to any nuns in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there are none here. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, of modestly dressed characters, uh, this is a question from Steve Strasser for Ashley. Why are they dressed as bunnies? Oh, we want to even know for this, though. Lauren gave you the answer. Why wouldn't they be dressed like bunnies? I'm sorry for the people in the audience who don't understand this inside joke. It is a long running inside joke, and I need to kill Steve after the panel. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> More seriously, though, you mentioned Lauren, and I mean, she's obviously someone that you all look up to, and the fact that you've developed in your art and been able to share that with her. But I think it's important to note that there are people that Lauren looks up to, and she mentioned a few of them uh, in the panel yesterday. It's kind of a barrier for entry, I know, for a lot of people who are starting out in art, knowing that there are people who are so much further developed, so much further down the road in their career or in their artistic pursuit. But there are always people who are going to be further ahead, and there are always going to be people who are further behind. So, I mean, it's important. You've got to kind of bear that in mind as you're creating that. I guess, like, yeah. just freeway, like, you just. Compete with ourselves. Yeah. Like, what were was saying earlier, like, to try and be better than who you were yesterday. Like, or cut out to yourself. Yeah, but as far as like, jump, like jumping into your career, you sort of have to start and like, keep moving. You know, like, whatever everybody else is doing around you is sort of uh, not so much a concern. Right? You just have to get in and start moving. If somebody else is going faster than you, then it's faster. As long as you're moving. And always be creating. I mean, I'm not here watching two of you. Just walk away. Little show off. So the show is I'm trying to steal the show. I'm sorry. Thank you. 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 Thank I can recite everything you just said in 10 minutes, okay? Don't try me. It says that I have to be sketching all the lectures, so that, that's just my thing. I'm constantly drawing. Where, where do I find that doctor that you <laughs> It's been a proven 
sketching like that, it's almost like, you know, you're not, you're not super focused on what you're doing. It's just something to do with your hands so that your ears are able to, you know, absorb in what you're doing, you know. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten kicked out of class because <laughs> I was drawing. Uh, I recently went through a box of uh, old notebooks and everything from elementary school and high school because for some reason my, uh, my parents decided that every last one of those things needs to be kept. And just all these tests, all these pop quizzes, all these homework assignments covered front and back in artwork. <laughs> <laughs> and really, really funny, creepy stickers. Oh, my God. Oh, that one you mess with the best you die like the best. <laughs> <laughs> As an aside, I, when I was going through all this stuff, I found my diary from when I was like eight or nine years old, and it's covered in these hot, half-naked women stickers, and I'm like, where did I find these? But the sticker was, on the very top of it, on the front, there is a sticker in rainbow holographic sticker paper that says, you mess with the best, you die like the rest. The impression I'm getting is that art is fueled a lot by hatred. Hatred is rage, hatred is rage. And hot girls. Uh, I was trying not to talk too much. <laughs> I like I like her. She's very much inspired by Rage and Hot Girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's satisfying to you know prove yourself like to not just to others but also to yourself. Like, see, I could do this. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have throughout your artistic career. You're gonna have a lot of naysayers. Um, yes. Yes. Nay oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Words that I can't say because they're lovely little children. Yeah. So. Bear in mind we've got to keep this nice and curated for all the thank you guys. We're happy to be friends, man. We're good. Uh, God, where was I even going? Uh, you were, it's about proving it though. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have a lot of naysayers throughout your life. And uh, uh, going back to what Abby just said, uh, my parents. Uh, my grand grandparents' parents. I was raised by uh, uh, a couple very, very much too old to have a kid. Um, so I call them my grandparents. My grandparents. Um, I was raised by them, and they were very, very much against me trying to pursue art as a career for a long time. And I just, I was a very stubborn kid. And I stuck with it. And it's just like, all right, cool. You can think whatever you want. I'm going to do what I want. And now, thankfully, uh, my dad passed away, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> comma, my dad passed away, but before he died, he was very, very supportive. Thanks for laughing at my dad dying. God! Thank God I hated that guy. Oh. <laughs> well, this is a Sunday, we're all very loopy. But, um... They lost control of this family. Very, very supportive of me and what I was doing. He was very proud of me, and my uh, grandmother, mother, has grown very, very supportive of me too. She is unendingly proud. But uh, yeah, you're gonna find a lot of people who are gonna try and put me down, especially those who are jealous of you. Especially, especially those who are jealous of you. I can't, I can't even count how many people have had to cut out of my life because every time I would succeed or do something new. All they were trying to do was make me feel bad about it because they weren't there as well. And that's where having friends who are proud of you in every one of your successes really, really helps and is so, so valuable to help you get through those times when people are telling you you can't do this. You know, you're not going to succeed. And a little bit of anger and forget you, I'm going to do it anyway and prove you wrong also comes a long way too. Yeah, friendship. Yeah. This panel is so crazy intense right now. <laughs> I'll bring it back to Bernie. Here's a fun question. Um, if you had to pick a character from the show you relate to, what Rainbow Dash will you be? <laughs> <laughs> so in all seriousness, what, uh, which pony? A lot of people are curious what your favorite pony is. Is it draw or animate? Or 
cosplay. So, which ponies do you particularly like, and which ponies do you particularly relate to? I like and relate to Applejack and things like that. Uh, real uh, trusty, hardworking, uh, sarcastic, I think. <laughs> well, that seems to be pretty much it. Does not have any magical powers, just cannot fly just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they say. The show sure takes a lot of Yeah. Uh, I think my favorite pony would have to be Sonata. I don't know why. She's just adorable and precious, and I love her forever. Close second would be Sunset, um, such a charm. But I think the pony that I relate to the most would be her dancer. Uh, she just really clicked with me. A lot of her struggles, a lot of the way that she feels and thinks, just really, really hit home for me. I think that episode actually made me cry because it just it it clicked with me somewhere even down. And I just, I love it a lot. My favorite pony is I started watching the show because I was with Fluttershy. Which is funny because I do not like drawing Fluttershy. I like drawing Applejack. She's not my favorite pony. I just like the colors that Applejack has. Not a big fan of Fluttershy's book, even though I like the personality, it's kind of cute to me. And it's my analogy of the week. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but um, I just like the orange and yellow that my brain that comes with Taco Jack. I like those colors together, how warm she is, along with like how, you know, how friendly she is. People like she's always wanting to help you, she's always talking and all that stuff. So that's another thing that color has to <laughs> So I'm just, I like colors. That's my favorite. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Color buddies. Yeah. <laughs> I am awful at, co at color, and I am eternally jealous of these lovely people up here who are able to do it. Because I absolutely cannot grasp the color of the Practice. Well, I can inspire you to try to do better color. Yeah. I'm just going to color pick for you next. That's fine. Um, anybody that knows me knows my favorite ponies are Fluttershy and Rain Lash. I can't pick between them. <laughs> Although I will say, I'm going to be sitting next to you, so you might want to pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, pressure. Um, well, I will say, as much as I love drawing Rainbow Dash, coloring her is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Too many colors. <laughs> All that rainbow. The same trend. Like I give Lauren so much credit because Rainbow in a design is so difficult to pull off. Like, because you, we don't want to, you know, have too many colors in a design. I'm sure you realize it's going to be the main character design. Exactly. If it's too chaotic, if there's too many colors, you got to keep it down to you know, a couple of four colors in a rainbow dash. Just to all the colors. All the colors. <laughs> if you guys actually like coloring, like doing it, I like having colors. Like I like being done coloring, and I like I like both. I like doing it myself because I feel like I have the most control that way. But it's like the actual coloring part, of it, I don't like as much as I like coloring. I like drawing sketches. Like there's a lot of files in my art book where I'm like you know, like that has just line work in it, <laughs> and I'm just like I could color this, but it'll take so much time. Yeah. Like, the opposite. Like, I hate line work with a passion. Oh my god, me too. I just love color. And Lachlan, favorite pony and one you relate to the most? Probably be Fairy. Yeah! Um, and she's also probably one of the ones that I relate to the most. Um, just because of the passion thing and the drama and the eating ice cream and having a happy little bowl and the whole so I really like really Fairy and I love her. Um, I also really like Twilight Sparkle just because she is so. I can't even describe her. How, how do you describe Twilight Sparkle? Yeah, she's adorable. Yes, I know. I'm kind of going to stand up. I am literally so soft and just start with the light. <laughs> so, I am very much related to that. So, I've got a question here. Um, we've talked a little bit about parental support and parents being concerned about never making any money. Uh, your kids never making any money. But uh, the question is as a worried parent uh, of a very talented young artist uh, in the front row, my question is how do you get into the business of becoming an illustrator? Any tips? Thanks.
thanks for inspiring art in my boy. Um, but how, how, you talked a lot about inspiration and sort of the, the loftier parts of art. What, the, the nitty gritty though of breaking into the industry, the, the grind, how do you navigate that and what are some tips for dealing with that and actually making it pay? Good, realistic advice, uh, my parents were real good about <laughs> making sure I had every opportunity to, like they were real supportive about art and they uh, sent me to any sort of extracurricular art classes and art classes in school. Thank you. Also, please lean into your mic. Who's the, who's the talented front row? Is over here? She had to go. Oh, well, she's not even here? That's okay, I'm recording it. All right. Uh, yeah, so they gave me a lot of opportunities to sort of learn art and sort of be in an art school setting before I was even old enough to go to art school. Uh, and then I went to art school, and a lot of people tell you don't need to do that, but I think it's good for sort of teaching people who are a little flightier and a little more uh, you know, artistically minded to buckle down and sort of complete things, hustle and pull all nighters and all that stuff that you sort of learn. Uh, and then after art school, uh, there's, it tends to be like people either go, they give up or they like push through when you become artists. Uh, a lot of people just like go straight to the bagel shop. Um, but I went and got a job uh, as a graphic designer, like a real entry level graphic design job, and worked that for as long as I had to until I could sort of quit it from freelancer or sort of uh, direct my own uh, career. But the advice I give people is to get that, they get to a place where you're going to get that graphic design job or that sort of like entry level art job because the stuff that you learn there is the actual stuff. Like the, the work stuff, the deadline stuff, uh, shortcuts and tips and tricks and all that stuff, the stuff that you pick up by doing artwork every day for a living uh, is the actual stuff that you need to have when you, you want to be a freelance artist or uh, or an artist that works in a studio or whatever. Uh, like that stuff, the little stuff that you need to learn that you can only learn by just working it out is, is the most valuable. So, uh, like, give people advice, like, get whatever art job you can get, even if it's just, you know, like painting signs at, at uh, Trader Joe's. Just get some job and do that a lot. Hi. I really don't know what I could add to that. That's pretty much the perfect response. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go down the line, but Steve, I have to see what the mic is in the direction. Yes. <laughs> this is what we're doing like this. I was asking, confirming with like Sam and Dave. A couple things. Take business classes because so many of us can benefit from that. Uh, and there's so many like art schools and stuff that don't require it. And being able to market yourself is so important because it's really tough. And that knowledge helps so much. Um, also, I would say persistence is key because my, my editors now, I think, are most impressed by. I am always coming back with new stuff, even if I'm turned away the first time, or the second time, or the, I don't even know how many freaking times I've uh, nagged one of my editors. How, how long did you have to keep up coming back to that when you got your first cover? Um, so, okay, so I got my first cover um, on Pony. It was a, a Everfree and um, Phoenix Comics exclusive, so that was through with them and not, you know, like they contracted with not my EW. Um, but that was how I got initially introduced to Bobby, the current Pony editor. Uh, I've been, I had nagged him for, well, I shouldn't say nag, but you know, just, I, he, he did tell me to stay on the radar. <laughs> but every now and then, hey, new samples, like new comic pages, just constantly just throwing stuff in his inbox every now and then. But I knew for a good three years yeah. until I got my first cover, like my first cover on the IDW payroll. That's how long sometimes it can take, and just stay persistent, I mean, in Abby's space here, it pays off. Perseverance is yeah. really key. Yeah. Um, this is something for which what she's saying but but um, a lot of you know that I'm, I do, I used to do work with someone in the US, but I was doing a lot of work with 
And, <laughs> um, and um, a lot of people, when I was drawing them, inspired them to do their own funny comic of their own or whatever. And I thought that was great. Well, I thought too. You know, we probably feel about it like part of the same thing. Um, but what I did not like when they started doing this comic, they would always link back to me, like, hey, this is what you as artists do. And I would always comment back, like, hey, that's great. I'm so glad that you're pursuing this. But they will always do one or two comics and then stop. And stop because they weren't getting recognized or because nobody was commenting on their stuff or whatever, whatever, whatever. And they would just get up. And you can't do that. Yeah. yeah, you can't do that. If you, if you like what you do, continue doing it. I see a lot of people give up because, uh, especially with like YouTube channels and stuff, and something like that, they give up after about maybe a month because they're not, they're only getting maybe 100 views per video, if even that. And, uh, or I'll see just a lot of people give up in any skill because they're not getting to where they want to be fast enough and it's just you have to remember it is constant and it's going to take a while and you're not going to be happy with where you are at first but you will get there if you stick with it and you persevere and i think going back to advice for getting in the industry uh i remember one thing from my own horrific experiences i won't name any names but just be careful where you go to school for your art schooling. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of horrific art schools out there that are purely for profit that will just, they're not interested in you. You are a number. They just want to get your money. Um, and they will not help you. They will put all these glamorous things in front of your eyes like, oh, look at all these great things we can do for you, and it's a ruse. And they try to butter you up when you go talk with your advisor. Like, oh, you're, you're amazing. amazing, you're amazing, you're so amazing. talented. The first couple months I was at the school that I was at, I was already better than the senior students that were there, and they were all the senior students were doing nothing because all the teachers hated what they were doing. The front fell down immediately and was horrified because I was paying 50K a semester to learn right. nothing. And so just be so, so careful when picking a school. There are tons of fantastic schools out there. I mean, I feel like you should say what school this is. I think so too. Yeah, 50K, no? yeah. Suit. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, Sam and I were just talking. I think that we have all had to say it was similar to the same. Yeah, I didn't go, but they tried to trick me into yeah. signing an enrollment agreement. Read everything before you sign it, by the way. And every little bit of fine print matters. to try and weasel money out of you. And I guess I should say this what I'm talking about to help people. Otherwise, Never. you're just saying, like, don't go yeah. to school. Yeah. yeah, never go to any of the art institutes. Okay. No. Like, ever, no. ever, ever, ever. I do. It was fun. Yeah, there are some that are okay. I know a few outliers that had a great time, but uh, the majority of people I know that went to them just didn't learn a thing. Didn't learn a thing. And the uh, the higher ups at the art institute are constantly in major trouble for all of the stuff that they pull and like sometimes you can have an outlier like Tony here who learned you know a lot but the majority of the people that I know uh didn't learn a thing it was awful for them every single one of my classmates from that program are doing nothing they are either don't have a job or the best case scenario that I see anybody from that program have is working as a mailman in my class <laughs> and, just going off of schooling, do not break your bank. Do not go into extreme debt over school because it is not what, you know, degree you have that matters in this industry. It is your portfolio. If you apply yourself, it doesn't matter where the heck you go. They just like, I think I've never had once asked, like, well, where'd you go to school? Like, they want to see you. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, apply it yourself. Uh, you learn. Also, always take, you know, any advice that you get with, from with <laughs> yeah, the yeah, brand salt. We don't tell you to go to school. school. Because <laughs> this, is, this is our personal experiences that we're talking about. And everybody's path is completely different. Look for the balance in the advice that I mean. 
see education where you find it to be on par. Eh? Right. Like I went to um, a, I went to University of Oregon because my family decided, well, you can pursue art there. They have a digital arts degree, but uh, you can also you know, get a well-rounded education, quote unquote. Uh, and you know that's fine and dandy, but I was an out-of-state student paying out the nose. First, and really, I learned more just <coughs> applying myself and you know teaching myself on my own time and constantly working at it. I learned more from that and connecting with people than if I'm going to be in debt for so long because I'm freaking school. And if I probably would have had the same kind of experience at community college, you know, like the classes do help. You know, what you learn does help going and finding other outside influences. It helps a lot to me need those. My black community money is like, my community college experience was actually a lot better than what I got from uh, the Art Institute and the, to go back to Art Institute, all the Art Institutes are also very different. And the one that I happen to go to, I think it's shut down now because it was so bad. Well, definitely not go back. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go to that one, so thank God. But um, I actually learned a lot in community college. Uh, I met a bunch of people who worked at Pixar, who worked at Disney, who worked on every major motion picture you've ever heard of, and I got to meet them and have one-on-one -on -one time with them because they were all graduates of that exact same program at the community college that I went to. So you can learn a lot no matter where you go. The main thing is your portfolio and your yeah. So we're not gonna, it's, we're not gonna once tell you don't go to school because you get to learn so much. Uh, what we're saying is just be careful, find what's right for you because the the name of the school doesn't matter, it's what you learn from it, what you take from it and show for it. And another important thing, I have been stuck on schooling for so long, but it's just it's such a thing. You get artists one of the big things, things don't shut up. <laughs> one of the big also big things about school that I wish somebody had told me before I started trying to get school is a really important thing of picking your school is the connections that you make while you're there. Um, who you meet, who your professors are, who they know, because uh, who you meet and who you know will help you a lot along the way. It's not going to make or break your career, but it's definitely a huge plus, which is why I think a lot of animators go to CalArts, because you get to meet so many people who are working in the industry through that school. Um, thank you. Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned the importance of the portfolio a couple of times, and Tony, this question was addressed to you specifically, but if anyone wants to chime in, please do. Uh, the question is, what kinds of drawings should be in a portfolio when applying for a comment this year? Pages. Yeah, you want to have sequential pages. Uh, what I did uh, to get my job was I took uh, pages from a comic that were already done and deconstructed them. I, it, might, it was either a script or it was a comic, but it basically I had two pages from a comic that was already done, and I just did my version of those two pages, and then looked at the comic that was out, there was a news service comic, and it was just like, well, I would have done this better, this better, differently. Uh, so I just did two pages. You can do like five pages, uh, but you definitely want to have interior pages if you want to do comics. Uh, yeah. Uh, a nice portfolio has like five pages and maybe a couple covers. Uh, and it should be your best stuff and it should be new. If you got stuff that's like a year old, you should Always do new stuff. Yeah. Get rid of old stuff. If there's stuff that's not finished, don't have that in there. Just have your best finished stuff. What did you do for graphic design? For graphic design portfolio? I mean, it was like 1999, I had no idea. <laughs> It was lost with the mother name by the end. Yeah, <laughs> and it went on my two kids. I got my graphic design job over the phone. It was a real uh, strange situation. <laughs> uh, I went to school with a guy who got a job, and he was like, oh, he can also do this. Uh, he's good at this. And they just called me and gave me that. Yeah. I wish that happened now. Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty good. Also, like, you know, as long as you can show that you can tell a story, especially in comics, that's useful because, but also, keep in mind that editors don't have a lot of time. They are so overworked. 
so most of the, my most successful portfolio comics that I've sent in this form were between like four and eight pages. Short, but I also have a couple of like 20 pages in there too, just in case. Yeah. Uh, Best thing you can do is have uh, an online portfolio. Uh, you're only, you, you can, it can be just a DeviantArt. Uh, but have it be a page on DeviantArt that's just your best stuff that you, that you keep up to date. Uh, and also, I always tell people, uh, if you want to make comics, make a comic. Uh, yeah. That Because that's much easier to hand somebody than a portfolio. Um, you can print, like, print your own comic or have a web comic. Um, or what I did was I just drew a comic and then I found somebody who wanted to publish it uh, for my first thing. Uh, but it's much easier to get comics work if they see when you can actually finish a comic book. Yeah. Um, we'll do a webcomic, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a provable track record. Mm -hmm. Got a question here about styles. Uh, from Emma, how did you all develop your distinct styles? And then another question, uh, how has your style changed since you became involved with my little mm -hmm. Let's take it from Lachlan down this way. Yeah, so how is it kind of different when you're cosplaying and in terms of like illustrations or animation? But, um, I'm gonna this a little bit, but so when I first started out, my little company was actually what I started out doing. And my cosplays were exclusively from the Goodwill or something that I pulled out of my closet. And there was no sewing involved whatsoever. But as I grew and as I took classes and learned how to sew and make costumes and this style way, so that's that's definitely what's changed is, is my knowledge and my how to make stuff. And like I said, I make stuff very heavily out of like stuff, so I'm just not about that. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a tough question. Um, because, I don't know, I just kind of, I, you do what you find really at least appeasing. You take bits and pieces from everything around you. It's not really a conscious decision um, most of the time, unless you're trying something new specifically. Um, but, I know, I started out in space, so I couldn't talk bad art. Uh, and then it was told in high school, you can't draw, you're not going to get seriously if you draw like that. Um, and I was like, okay, so I shifted more towards anime, which wasn't really much bad. <laughs> <laughs> not the same crap. Um, and I would get told, like, oh, you have to draw like Disney, or you're not going to get taken seriously. Yeah, like, what hot garbage is that? Don't do this. Like, my mother. Yeah. You know, right? That says so much because my mom is Satan. Uh, <laughs> like, let me just be clear. This is a day. Oh, my God. No, no, you don't understand. My mom is crazy. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of different No idea. Horrible um, parents read wonderful artists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone has like wonderful parents. <laughs> well, then you're not a wonderful artist. Oh! Sick bird! <laughs> Going back on topic, I know it's stagnated for a bit because I was trying to be what I believe other people wanted to be. And I improved the most when I embraced what I wanted to be and what I enjoyed. Uh, just what came from my heart as opposed to, you know, trying to be something else. Uh, like, if you want to draw your freaking Sonic OCs, do it. Like, if that's what gets you drawing, it works. Yeah. So, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> about styles. Okay. Uh, where, where did your style come from? Right. Has it changed since you started drawing my Okay. Yes. That's the basis. So, um, when I was in school, I got into anime, and my drawing style before I got into liking the style of, you know, manga and anime Japanese style was vastly different. And everyone in school was drawing anime. And this was back in 2005 or 2003. And so I got a how to draw manga book. <laughs> and I started drawing. And the thing about manga style or anime style is that once you get into it, it's hard to get out. It's like 
a drug. <laughs> like, he tried to, like, change how you draw the eyes, and it was a drug. Like, I tried to get out of it myself for years, and people were just like, oh, that's like it! <laughs> it was so mad, it was like, I can't, I can't stop this, but... Like, when Anime Style does have its merits, and, like, you know, there's people that pull it off. But I remember one time there was a panel at an anime convention, and this, like, actual established character designer said you only need to be able to draw one good face, and I died a little inside. <laughs> like, what kind of heresy? <laughs> Well, yeah, because all those characters are just like same exact face, same like hairstyle, slightly different hair, um, but like the eyes are all exactly the same. Also, different chest sizes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was that That's kind of anime. Different chest sizes. Uh, <laughs> 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 but um, when I got into ponies, I kind of like that was the thing that got me out. <laughs> because it's a very different style, and I started drawing it constantly. And that's what helped me get into more of the original style, totally connected with anime in a way. And then I started, is anybody familiar with um, Brianna Terry Garcia, or whatever her name is? Yes. Okay, yes. She's an amazing artist. I love her art. I worship the ground she walks on. <laughs> okay, I love her, and I looked at her Indian art style. It's very beautiful. She works for Disney, go to art in California, and drawing, you know, tip shots for people or anything by her Disney character or kids. And I looked at her style, and I'm like, I really love her style. So I, I kind of meshed my my style with anime with ponies and her style. So I kind of in my own, like, my own project, you kind of have to work things together. Yes. Like, so it's kind of just how we know this style. Exactly. That's what I always say, is, is that a style is just sort of, like, your influences filtered through you, multiplied by how good you are. <laughs> like, it's only, it's, my style is just only as good as I can do right now. Like, my influence is kind of as good as I can do. And with that, we've run a little bit over, and we're going to start our next panel. So if we can get one more huge round of applause. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. If you can get a chance to have your question answered, I believe many of our artists will either be wandering around or they'll be in the dealer room for a little bit longer. Fire stuff! Coming up next, we'll be having the DPA panel in about 30 seconds. Do we have to leave? Um, I'm honestly not sure. I would stick foot. You got a good seat. I would stick foot. Thanks for listening. And that concludes the fifth episode of this Nightmare Nights 2017 podcast series. In our final episode, we're going to go ahead and meet the voice actresses. We'll see you then. Wheel Trouble out.